How do you do this? Like this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this question is directed toward uh, Elizabeth Alexander, mainly. Um, I noticed that Terence Hayes got the award, uh, this, was it this year or last year, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm more familiar with uh, Major Jackson. Could you tell me uh, what the differences between the two and why Terence Hayes should get that award rather than Major Jackson? Well, they're, they're, they're just very, very different uh, poets. Um, uh, their aesthetics are different. They're both African-American young men, uh, so they have that in common. Um, but I don't think that the books were against each other in the same year. So, I mean, I would say, Terence Hayes is a great poet, and you should you should read the book. Um, uh, I, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I, I wouldn't put those two against each other any more than I would put any of these poets on the list in relatively adjacent times against each other. Um, except for there being black men, um, there's not necessarily a basis for comparison. Can I answer that also? The difference between Terrence, the difference between Major Jackson and Terence Hayes has something in common with the difference between Seamus Heaney and Paul Muldoon. Quite a lot it's in like, common, really. It's a koan. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean it. There's a woman in the back with a question. In contemporary poetry, um, well, actually, I I, f I feel somewhat a um, little bit more cheerful about our, uh, easier access to a wide range of contemporary voices. Um, if you if you look presses that um, didn't used to publish as wide a range of voices are now doing more than they did. Uh, anthologies that used to be distinctly uh, non-inclusive ha have, have opened up a little bit. Um, you have a wider range of people being asked to uh, edit special issues of this, that, and the other thing. I mean, I, 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 the beautiful thing about poetry, and speaking as poets, what Maureen was saying about that kind of voraciousness. We read everything. We're autodidacts. We read long into the night, and that's the metaphor for our whole life as people who make poems. We love poems. Uh, so deeply and precisely, but at the same time, um, it, it ranges so widely what we have to take in to satisfy that hunger that's never satisfied um, and that allows us to, to, to make poems. And that's, of course, very, very different why a poet reads um, from the work of poems getting a stamp of approval and, and, and moving forth in the culture or being taught or being included in anthologies uh, and so forth and so on. Um, but I do, um, I, I feel that this, that there is more access now. And I see a lot of it from my own vantage point um, um, as a teacher, um, uh, from uh, you know a lot of the changes, and I'll just sort of repeat and, and elaborate, um, that ha have taken place in the university with people who are teaching with books that are available, having lived just in my own university life, um, through seeing books that no one had heard of, that were out of print. You know, books like, this isn't poetry, but it just comes easily to mind. You know, their eyes were watching God. It amazes me when my students tell me that they all read it in their high schools, when that was a book that when I started studying was out of print, uh, and that people passed around their battered, rubber-banded copies of that book, and that, that, that Zora Neale Hurston, because of beginning with black feminist scholars' work, has become someone who is more of a familiar name. Um, that's the kind of change that I've seen, although, you know, also still there are many people who are, are teaching all white 20th American centuries. Um, and that just doesn't get at, at all, that, all that there is. Um, so I think that that means that then they're missing something and their students are missing something as well. Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. Kind of 
Um, I think that the, um, the trickle down of, again, just sitting from where I sit, of what has been broadened, the options in a university education and how that then moves down to people, you know, in different areas, passing along their knowledge of poetry. I think that has shifted some, but again, um, uh, not, not nearly enough. I mean, I don't mean to sort of be the grim reaper, but um, I'm amazed, you know, I teach fundamentally from within the Department of African American Studies, and I feel that sometimes when I literally set foot outside of my department, it's, it, you know, in the bright sunlight, it's a whole nother world where the work that's very precious to my colleagues uh, uh, is is not valued at, at, at in other spots in the university, not valued in in the sort of core knowledge that students are still drawn to across the university. Mm -hmm. I wonder whether we could find a way to conclude. We've only got a couple more minutes, and I was hoping, Tony, you've got a comment. Um, I have a dream that I would like to share, and it's a recurrent dream. It may be um, a vain or a rational dream, but I really do have this dream. I dream, as Emerson said in his essay, uh, the poet, um, who that I, that the, you know that the that the poem of these United States has not yet been written. I love American poetry. It's a great you know many tentacled thing, but uh, I still think you know I still think I I look around and I and I read this book after that book and I think I think that somebody is going to write a poem or a book of poems. And people are going to read it, and they're going to say, oh, wow. And they're going to say, you should read this book, and everybody is going to read it. That it's going to happen, you know, like, I don't know, Bruce Springsteen or Motown or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think it could happen. And, I, and, and, and Emerson said, I look in vain, and then Walt Whitman popped up, you know, and... I, I'm still looking for that book, um, and, and I want to see that book happen. And, uh, you know, I know, human, I know we need poetry, and I know America needs poetry, and I know these are, these are dark, powerless uh, times. And, uh, uh, and, you know, I want somebody here to either send me that book or write that book. But why should, why should there be, or why would there be, I know it's a dream, but why, why should there be one book as opposed to all of the ways that the story is already being Well, told? that way you know, we could just make a lot of, lot of copies of that one. <laughs> <laughs> and that would accomplish. <laughs> you know, it's a really good book, Elizabeth. You should read it. <laughs> I will read it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe just to conclude, maybe somebody would like to talk about Terence Hayes. The I, I, I've been restraining myself. Terence Hayes may be that book. Uh, that is, I mean, who knows? As as Jim and others have said, we don't know yet what's going to be great, what's going to happen in a hundred years. But but I, I do think I know what books stick in my mind after I read them for months and months, and what books I choose to teach, and what books I keep recommending and recommending. And Terence Hayes is actually one of them. That book elsewhere, and I won't recite the essay that I wrote. Uh, because we don't have time and your time is valuable. But it is a funny book. Uh, it is a very strange book. It is a book that takes the very familiar stories of identity politics, of lineage, of fatherhood, of what we learn or don't learn from our fathers and our adoptive fathers and from the language that we grow up speaking. And it plays tricks with those uh, conventions and it turns them inside out. And it's a book, and Hayes has been since his second book. I don't like the first one. I like the, the next three. Uh, a book that is very, very hard to pin down. And it's, it's a book that changes its way of using rhyme, its idea of form, uh, its relation to the poet's biography on almost every page, uh, and its relation to America, American regions also, where, where you see the poet, what America is to that poet. Uh, I'm not, Tony, I'm not gonna tell you this is the book that you call for. I but it might be, it might, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It might be. I think we're going to have to stop there. But thank you for coming. And thank you for a terrific panel. Thank you, everybody.